Good morning, folks. About an hour after yesterday's news uploaded, NASA updated their endless spiral, and now both NASA and NOAA expect a CME impact on October 13th. I'm still going with our original forecast of no impact, and today we'll show you another example of far side activity, looks the same on SOHO, and the coronal hole stream that is likely to impact Earth instead of the CME this week. Also, we've got three of the best articles you could ask for. I hope you're awake already. Let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com. Watch top left as another filament hits the northeast launch pad and says goodbye before being able to swing in past Earth. That was about it, however. Solar flaring is very low as the Earth-facing quiet continues to suppress all activity from sunspots regardless of magnetic complexity. We will continue watching the biggest group down south, and it appears from the magnetism that the northern incoming limb merits a peak every couple hours today as well. Folks, Soho coronagraph feed is patchy at best, but you can still tell at least two good-sized CMEs were released by the sun. Of course, since there is nothing happening on the Earth-facing side there but the incoming coronal hole, we know this activity came from the far side of the sun, likely the southern central active region. Neither this, nor what the U.S. experts are tracking, is coming anywhere near our planet. I have no idea why the solar wind data looks like this. Discover's stream was fine yesterday. Either way, you can see a density spike in orange yesterday leading to today's increased solar wind speed in yellow and the tiny geomagnetic uptick on the KP yesterday. This is due to a tiny coronal hole already turning away. It barely clipped us. And while the big grouping should be the space weather issue later this week, before that, it begins the earthquake watch and what our disaster prediction at beta score suggests should begin around sunrise in the eastern U.S. Full details can be found on our Twitter page. Top stories today begin with snow and cold. Fall came dressed up like December across parts of Canada and even into the United States. Ice Age now keeps great account of these, by the way, and apparently it wasn't so warm in parts of Europe this week either, Slovakia and Poland taking the brunt there. Folks, Scafetta does it again. One of our favorites co-authored a new paper on nighttime increases in Mount Vesuvius seismicity. Open access at the link below. And don't miss the bit there about geomagnetic influence externally, which is going to be 100% driven by solar modulation, which itself, as observers know, can often be based on the planets. We are starting to see a mountain of evidence for Mercury influencing the Sun. Does anyone remember what we said in our book? I'm loving that article. And of course, it's not just the weather and earthquakes and solar activity and planets that are connected, but we are too. Even though this is an article about Mars, frequent flyers and those exposed to weak magnetic field zones of Earth take heed. Personally, I'm hoping geomagnetism kicks back up slightly and we can cancel the quake watch, but I do think that blip was it. We'll see as she goes, and we've got pressure and radar forecast here, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.